Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Steve-O's Wild Ride. And now we've seen me get pretty excited about some guests in the past, but never have I been more excited than for Sharon Osbourne. Man, I'm a lifelong Aussie fan. Everything about the Osbournes kicks ass. So let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, Sharon Osbourne. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. What an honor. I can't even believe it. I was frankly surprised that you agreed to do this and uh, I couldn't have been more thrilled about it. Why, why are you surprised? I've known you since you were a little boy. What the fuck are you surprised about? <laughs> uh, now, speaking of when I was a little boy, okay, I want to show you this uh, framed picture right here. Maybe you oh. recognize it. This is print number 21 of 90 in existence. Now, Knoxville bought this print for me because uh, he just knew what a crazy maniac fan of Ozzy I've always been. And what's unbelievable Knoxville didn't even know is that this picture was taken of Ozzy and maybe I believe even Wimbledon, but certainly in London in 1974. Yeah. And I was born in Wimbledon in 1974. So essentially, this is a picture of Ozzy when and where I was born. And oh, my <laughs> Lord. That just gave me goosebumps. Yeah, tell me about it. Oh, it gives me goosebumps all the time. Uh, I, I just I just love it so much. And, uh, you know, I know that there's just so, so much that I want to ask you. And, and uh, again, I can't say it enough how thrilled I am to have you. Uh, I, I, like I said, was just such a fan of Ozzy. Ozzy was the gold standard for me when it came to excess, success, being out of control on drugs and alcohol. I always just aspired to party like Ozzy, to be crazy like Ozzy. And uh, I, as a nod to him, in 2003, I got the words shit and fuck tattooed on my knuckles. Oh my God. I got to show that to him one time at the Jay Leno show. Um, now that I had those tattoos for over 10 years and they, and I'm so fiercely proud of the fact that they never held me back. They never got in the way. They never caused any problems, but ultimately they did outlive their usefulness and I got them lasered off. <laughs> right. Good for you. Yes. Yeah. So uh, first off, how have you been with, uh, with everything going on? Jesus. Uh, listen, I can't complain because we're all well. And thank God, you know, the family has not got any of this virus. And so we're blessed. You know, it's um, I think the most thing is it just fucks with your head. Yeah. Just really fucks with your head because every day the rules to this virus change. They tell you one thing, then it's another. And, you know, it's, uh, oh, don't worry. It's going to go when the, when it gets hot. Well, it's fucking boiling. And now there's more cases than ever. Right. Right. You know, so it's like every day the, the rules change. But listen, we're fine. And, and where are saying. you today? Are, are you in L.A.? Are you in London? We're in L.A., yeah. Uh-huh, fantastic. And Sharon, if you hear somebody else talking, I'm Scott Randolph. I'm Steve's co-host. <laughs> Hi, he, Scott. He's, How are you? He's, I'm good. He's three for 15 from introducing me. <laughs> and if you hear another interesting voice, that's going to be Paul Brisky over there. He's our engineer <laughs> slash producer. Hey, Sharon. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Scott. It's a pleasure. <laughs> I, I think I, Steve is just really excited about this one. Uh, when we were talking, we were coming back from New Mexico, and we were like, you know, we might have Sharon Osbourne on the podcast podcast he broke down the whole entire story of how much he loves you and his relationship and i know he has a ton of things to talk to you about well yeah it was it was a, a roughly 12 hour drive and i would say a, a good two three hours good, good three hours was devoted to me giving him some history about about the osbornes and um uh, you know, most notably, I think, and this has just got to be some kind of, like, really impressive world record, is the fact that Black Sabbath was such a, like, just a, you know, arena rock, huge, you know, successful band, and they actually kicked Ozzy out, right? Because he was just too much out of control with drugs and alcohol, is, is how I understand it. And... That's 
for all of the, say, the Michael Jackson leaving the Jackson 5, where, you know, Justin Timberlake leaving in sync, you know, for all of the, the people who have, have left bands and gone solo to eclipse the success of the band that they left, is there another example of somebody who did that? However, the circumstances of them leaving the band was they got kicked out. <laughs> Right. That's I just can't imagine that that's ever happened. That, I don't think so. The nearest one I can think of is Sting and he left. So, you know, right. It's, um, yeah. Sting would be in there with Michael Jackson, with Justin Timberlake. And it, uh, it's it's just that um, in especially in this genre of a of a, you know, the band that they were in their genre, it was just never done. The singer would always, you know, just go well, into isolation. Well, right. I mean, Ozzy had his own reasons for going into isolation. He would just snap and then shave his head and then go into a hotel room for months. <laughs> yep. And I remember because I, I uh, my formative years were in in England. I uh, we went to the American School in London, and and so you know I got into all of this living in London. I actually had the same dentist as Ozzy uh, when, when I was in you know in uh, in grade school, and uh, I would see Kerrang. I would you know all these magazines, yeah, yeah. And, and Ozzy would have all these different hair lengths. Um, but it's just it's just so fascinating. And with with Black Sabbath, uh, the, it was actually your father who managed Black Sabbath. That's correct. Yes. And I worked for my father. Yeah. Right. And so then when when Black Sabbath kicked out, kicked Ozzy out, uh, that was uh, you, you guys were not already together at that point. No, uh, uh, we were just friends. Yeah, we were we were friends. My main friend in the band was Tony. Uh -huh, okay. He was like, you know, we would keep in touch over the years. And if he was in town, he'd say, do you want to come to the show? I'll leave you some tickets. You know, it was one of those sort of things. We weren't like buddies speaking every week but you know we would stay in touch loosely and that was it right and for people who aren't quite as plugged in tony is tony iomi the the lead guitarist really the the face of black sabbath you know aside yeah. from ozzy i was under the impression that she was tour manager Were no you... no no managed the whole program though they put everything together ah. yeah yeah, for yeah, Ozzy, I absolutely. Was, I was tour manager while I was on the road with Electric Light Orchestra, and I was mainly their tour manager. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. So there's, I've heard these, these, I suppose you would call them myths or legends, but uh, of course, I, you know, a lot of people know that Ozzy, before he was in Black Sabbath, he worked in the slaughterhouse in uh, in England, and so he was sort of, you know, comfortable with with death and 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 this and that. And so I heard it. I'm dying to find out if this is true, but that when when there were meetings for Ozzy to get a, uh, a record deal for his solo career, for his first album, which is a bona fide greatest hits album, Blizzard of Oz. Like, they're going into these meetings, I heard a story that, uh, that you directed Ozzy to walk in with a, a live dove in one hand and a dead dove in the other, and that he would go into the, the boardroom and, and bite the head off of the dead dove and spit it on the boardroom table and release the live dove so it would fly around the room and then just turn around and walk out. Is there any truth to that? Being able to ask Sharon Osborne about that story is so cool. You know what else is cool? My cats. And I love them so much. Of course, I have a litter robot. What's that? It's a self-cleaning cat litter machine. And that makes it so that my cats don't have to stand in their own poop to poop. And I don't ever have to clean up the poop. See, there's a sensor that detects when they go in there. And it gives them seven minutes to do their thing. And then it cleans itself. How does that work? It just rotates. And then it sifts out the poop, drops it down into the drawer below. This is without me doing anything at 
all. I get a notification on my phone that says, your litter robot drawer is full. There it is. You just replace the bag maybe once a week and your house never stinks like kitty litter. Your cats are happy and healthy. You can't beat it. So how do you get one? You go to catpoop.com and buy yourself a litter robot. Buy it today and the shipping's completely free and you get a 90 day money back guarantee. That's right. But there's no way you're gonna fucking send this thing back because it's the dopest invention ever made. So again, go to catpoop.com and get yourself a litter robot. Yeah, dude. Okay, it's, it's you got bits of it right. The deal was he was to go in because it was his first introduction to the record company. They'd never met him. So they were having, you know, all the staff come into the conference room and he was going to, you know, walk in. And you got to remember, this was like 80... 81 shit. probably or something. 81. 80, no, it was 80, I think, or 81. Anyway, nobody gave a shit about Ozzy. It was a cheap deal. They were doing him a favor, putting the record out. They didn't know about this genre of music at all. Well, because Ozzy created it. <laughs> they, they knew nothing about this music. And so he goes in there and all these people are like, you know, listening to Crazy Train. They, they've got no fucking idea what they're listening to. And we said, take the doves and let them go. And it's like a peace offering. Everybody will go, oh, how gorgeous. That's lovely. And, you know, we'll walk out. So Ozzy goes in, he's already drunk, and it's the morning, it's like 10 in the morning. So he's got a dove in each pocket. He sits on this girl's lap, who he has no idea who she is. So he sits on her lap. He does, the vibe in the room is very strange. And he looks at everybody, they look at him, and he takes the dove out, and he just rips the head off and spits it on the girl's lap. That was it. Over. Game over. He then gets the other one and lets the other one free in the room. So it's flying and shitting in the room. <laughs> and then we got ushered out by security. And that was it. And that was with the, the record label to actually sort of pitch the record deal? No, the deal was done. Oh. It was, okay, this is Ozzy. You've just signed him. It was like a meet and greet. Oh, gotcha. Meet and greet. Because I was and under the so impression. And so it was just like, hi, you know, and that was it. I got back to the office. I got a call from legal. They said, if you ever do this again, we won't release the album and we'll literally destroy you. And we're like, oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So, so that's uh, I'm I'm pretty proud to even know that story because I was looking for it on Wikipedia and there was um, no, nothing about it. Yeah. And um, and and, and here's the, this is what's uh, just again I'll keep going back to it because to be kicked out of Black Sabbath and then go on to have the solo career which just utterly eclipses anything that Sabbath ever did. Um, and then after that, all these years later, the, the Black Sabbath reunion. I've got to, you know, I've got to guess you being the shrewd, you know, business mind behind the Aussie empire and the way that the world works. When Black Sabbath gets reunited with Aussie, now it's going to be on your terms. And essentially all of the other people in Black Sabbath are going to be employees of the band. Is that about right or is it's about right, but Ozzy and Tony own the name. Uh -huh. Giza and Bill don't. So it's Ozzy and Tony that own the name, and they are partners in Black Sabbath. So you're kind of right. Ozzy and Tony are equal. And at the time, the other guys, you know, it's kind of like pay for play. Yeah. What do you call it? Uh, a jam session employee. <laughs> Um, now, I wonder, th this is a, a, a somewhat similar situation, but with Motley Crue, where there's all kinds of uh, different uh, accounts, or, or there's Vince Neil's version of he got kicked out and the others say he left. But of course, ultimately, Vince Neil came back to Motley Crue as an employee. Is that, is that right? 
I don't know. I honestly don't know. But um, I know that they are kind of each on different deals. I know that, but I don't know what any of the deals right. are. Right. I just am so fascinated by the business of it all. And um, then, okay, so after Ozzy left Black Sabbath, then they get Ronnie James Dio. Yeah. And the, the world's just not that happy about Sabbath without... Ozzy, right? I mean, Dio's a lovely guy, or he was a lovely guy. He was a, a, a great talent, but Sabbath never really did very well with Dio, did they? They had two hit albums. They did. They had two good hit albums. They had two good tours together. And um, then it was the band were fighting. Uh -huh. There was a lot of fighting in the band with Ronnie. So um, I, you know what, Ronnie had a great voice, but to to change a band that had a kind of bluesy type vocal, real gritty bluesy vocal to a rock opera vocal, it was so different. Because uh -huh. I, I always looked at Ronnie as a rock opera type singer, you know? Yeah. Oh, it was one of those. <laughs> and Ozzy had such a bluesy voice, I, I never got it. Right. So then Dio left Sabbath, and Tony yeah. became the singer of Sabbath, and that's when they really didn't do that great. Yeah, well, they kept getting all these different guys in. I mean, every week it was somebody else and somebody else, you know. And they were doing, you know, really badly and taking silly gigs, you know, like playing, you know, under somebody. They weren't the headliner anymore. And always when you go from that headliner to, OK, now you're underneath and you're on somebody else's tour. And for so long, it's your tour and you're the headline right. and then you drop. It's very kind of humbling. Spinal tap. <laughs> Very spinal tap. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so when Dio left Sabbath, he put out Holy Diver. Was that was his first album? Because, God, that's a good album. He's good. Yeah. You know, on his own, Dio's great. Was yeah. great. Absolutely. And um, Ozzy, of course, Ozzy. How much uh, with, with MTV coming out, right, was... Uh, like Bark at the Moon was one of the first like really big videos on MTV. Like uh, that, that that helped explode Ozzy's success. It did. It did. It broadened his you know his audience a lot. It did. And then there was the legend of, of biting the head off of the bat. You had to know it was a pretty safe bet that we were going to talk about Ozzy biting the head off of the bat because it's a crazy story. But do you know what's a 100% guarantee? That I will always, in my pocket, have this. The case for my Raycon E25 earbuds. That's right. I've said it before. If you ever catch me without it in my pocket, without my Raycon E25 earbuds, I will record your voicemail greeting, whatever little shout out video you want for your buddies, because I'm never going to get caught without them. I love them. I can't stand working out without listening to music. And when I'm working out, you think I want big clunky earphones on? Oh, that's hot and uncomfortable. These are not only comfortable, but they're half the price of any other premium earbuds out there. And unlike all of those other premium earbuds, these ones you can actually control. Pause, skip track, all the rest of it. Dude, they're so comfortable in here, I can have my head resting on my pillow and feel fine. They're the best. And if you go to buyraycon.com slash stevo, you can get yourself some for 15% off. That's right, 15% off if you go to buyraycon.com slash stevo. I mean, dude, work out, listen to tunes, and just be the man. Whew. Now let's talk about that bat. Which, which yeah. everybody knows about. And they sent them to get these crazy rabies shots, which back then went through your stomach. And, and we're really... Uh, oh, that was, that, 
was a huge deal. That was a huge deal. I mean, he, <laughs> it might have been like a mistake and like funny as fuck at the time, but then he had to pay for it by getting all these shots that you take over a long period of time. And we were all really frightened for him. Yeah, the, I mean, the shots were like huge long needles that go into your stomach. And how long did they have to take, give them for? Oh, over six months. Oh, wow. wow. So so when you're traveling with them and you see Ozzy bite the head off of bat, like, what's your expression while you're there? Like, what the fuck did he just do? <laughs> or is it funny? I, I was like, oh, my God. First thing I think of, rabies. That's it. It's over. <laughs> you know. Just right. And then there's these, these. I, I mean, I wouldn't even call them myths or legends, but this, like, folklore, which which I just, they would say that Ozzy would have the the uh, the crowd pass a bucket around and everybody spits in the bucket, and then it goes on stage and he drinks the bucket. You've heard those ones before, yeah? Sure, yeah, and there's no, you know me, there is no way I would ever, ever, no, that that is like you know it's like uh, Johnny cut his finger off and the next he's cut his head off. You know things right. get exaggerated and right, like Richard Gere with the gerbil and yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, all of this just incredible history and I love it so. Much. And again, Blizzard of Oz. That that was Ozzy's first solo album. Yeah, I mean. If, yeah. if that's not a greatest hits album, with, I don't know, Suicide Solution, sure. Crazy I mean, Train, just, it was, Mr. It's Crowley. It's an all-time, an all-time classic album. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And, uh, and, and with all of the, my, my, my first concert was Twisted Sister, but uh, was it my, I think my second concert was uh, the Ultimate Sin Tour. Oh, Wow. And uh, Ozzy wasn't in very good shape in 87. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wasn't. <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember him like going back, back and forth across the stage and it really tiring him out. <laughs> yeah, it was probably loaded at the time. Right, for, for <laughs> sure. And then, of course, the Osbournes comes out on MTV. And this is a, this is, this a little bit broke my heart because Jackass came out in year 2000 and set absolute records for ratings. It was the highest rated show in the history of MTV until you guys came along. And you can imagine how I felt because we were out here breaking our bones and just like absolutely murdering ourselves for these ratings. And then you guys stroll along and you're sitting in the living room and you're more popular than us <laughs> just hanging out at home. <laughs> And it's and, and God bless you for it. What uh like what what a what a revival. And and the Osbournes came before Ozfest, yeah? Um, no, Ozfest oh. came before, yeah. Wow, so I didn't I, I thought of Ozfest as a little bit yeah, no, newer. No, Oz Ozfest came before, yeah. But do you know what it was? It was like we were the festival that every kid wanted to go to, but it was like under, it was kind of underground. People didn't want to write about it. They didn't want to speak about it because we weren't the it thing to go to, you know? Lollapalooza was, and we were like this bunch of crazy ass that nobody wanted to write about. But we were going out and doing, you know, sell out business everywhere and just doing our thing, but quietly. Yeah, I mean, I think Ozfest was uh, a little bit more edgy with like Slipknot. I think maybe, maybe yeah, you guys had it Slayer. It was, and it's like you know that genre of music has never been too popular with the press. Never. Right. I yeah. Always felt that they looked at it as if they were the bastards of the music industry. Uh huh. Yeah. You no, know, it wasn't chic. It's not you too. It's not the Stones. It's not you know Lollapalooza. So it's not chic to be seen at. You know. But it was a, certainly a rebirth for Ozzy. Oh, it was. It was just phenomenal to be able to to go out every summer and give these young bands a stage and you know see these bands that were 
you know, not even signed at the time. And suddenly, you know, the year later, they've got a huge hit album. It was just exciting. So exciting. I think Lamb of God would be one of those bands, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Slipknot hadn't got their album released at the time either. Right. It was wow. just unbelievable and you think you know incubus and all wow. those great bands that we had yeah um i think uh the, the success of ozzy's solo career is is really about just the the caliber of musicians that have been behind him i mean yeah. i like back to randy rhodes and you know jakey e. lee all, all these just incredible musicians and what was the process like for getting the for finding these musicians to perform with Ozzy to put the band together? It was really, really hard, hard, hard. It's not something that just happens, you know. It's um, it's really hard. It's a long process, but it's Ozzy has always, you know, to go from Tony Iommi. Yeah. <laughs> not go less than so to find somebody that is so creative but young was you know it was a gift from god yeah i i, I just i just love it so much and your career on your like when, when did you get into all the television stuff on, on your own only from when we did the osbournes hmm. and then that was it. That was it. I'd never thought I always loved to do my business side and creative side and do that. And then it just came organically from the Osbournes. Right. Safe to say that you're Chris Jenner before Chris Jenner, as far as being like the momager, the, 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 the business mind, the, the build to the empire behind the scenes. Yeah. 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 I, I love it. And, uh, you know, I, Sorry, go ahead. What, what, what do you like doing more? Do you like uh, you like touring and doing band stuff, or do you like going to the studios and doing TV shows and air conditioning? And <laughs> I do you know what they're both so different, but they both are great. But there's nothing like seeing that live audience, those kids that just gives off so much energy and love. And it's just, there's nothing like seeing a festival audience, you know, it just gives me chills to this day. I love it. Yeah. It's giving me chills too. I mean, the amount of people you put on the map just from doing that is, is incredible. <laughs> it's so funny because Scott asks, what do you like better, the touring or the TV studios? <laughs> and in my mind, I'm thinking, or do you like bending people's will to dominate them in business? <laughs> and because uh, that's how I think of you, I just love it so much. The the, the just the the way that you're the the puppet master. It feels like, and uh, and and what what a wonderful family you have. Just last week, I was with this uh, this professional skateboarder who rides what's called the mega ramp, where it comes down like and flies like through arenas and with the X yeah. Games. And uh, I, I mentioned to him that I was going to be talking to you, and he said, "Dude, I've got the I've got this great story." He said that he was at the beach and and uh, going the wrong way. He had to do a U-turn, but his car got stuck in the sand right on the boardwalk. And there he is, and the wheels are just spinning. He said, all these people are just going by, laughing at me. Nobody's doing anything. And then all of a sudden, after I've been there for a while with all these people going by, somebody says, hey, man, let me help you out. You've got to uh, let the air out of your tires. And, and here, come on, we'll do it together. And that was Jack Osborne. Yeah, he's a good guy. He is. He had no he's idea who guy. Elliot Sloan was. That's funny. This is Elliot Sloan, the professional mega ramp superstar. And Jack Osborne didn't know that. It's just testimony that Jack would do that for anybody in that situation. Yeah. And we, yeah. we sat next to Jack on the plane and we had a good conversation with right. him. I don't remember where we were coming back from, but. We were coming back from Costa Rica picking up our fifth dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and he was coming back from doing, I think, show, uh, a TV show with Ozzy at the Grand Canyon or they're doing yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's just, and, and I, I have quite the history with Jack. I remember he was newly sober in, I believe, 2005. And somehow he ended up over at my apartment where there was just a few of us just getting cross-eyed drunk. But we all, and Jack stayed, stayed completely sober and we all just had this riotous good time. And uh, he's always been a, been, been a real bloke. 
I think everybody. Well, yeah, he is. He's a good bloke, exactly. <laughs> but you know what? I always look at you and I look at Jack and I see what Jack did and you've done it and it's just amazing. Oh, it's it's such a it, it's I, a blessing. I, it's such it's a, a blessing. You know what? People say that they there there's no such thing as miracles, but they are. Because for me, this is a miracle. Oh, you got to believe in foolish miracles, Sharon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, and, um, oh, yeah, that just, it, 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 warms, it warms my heart. And I just wish you could, you could uh, bestow upon people the willingness to do the work of recovery. But, you know, but you can't. And, and I don't know what gave me that willingness, or, or Jack for that matter. But, God, I'm grateful for both of us. But was there one point that you said, this is it, I can't anymore? I was, yeah, it was when Noxo locked me up in the psychiatric ward. And, and they yep. decided to keep me for a couple of weeks. <laughs> that was a, enough time for the... Was the, it then, or was it the 52-50? Well, that, that, that's when I got taken into the psych ward on 51-50, and they turned it into 52-50, so that means that they could keep me. Scott's an example of, uh, of the miracle of recovery as well here. It's, oh, uh, yeah. It's great. I was at the, uh, the premiere, there was a premiere, the screening of uh, the, the documentary that Jack made about Ozzy. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, God, if, the, if Tommy Lee isn't the star of that, when he tells the story about Ozzy smearing the shit all over the hotel room walls. Oh, <laughs> my God, and Tommy throwing up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, so, so, so brilliant. And so then the Osbournes came out. You get into all kinds of television stuff, like, like uh, judging on The X Factor. The and, and, and eight. Well, no, no, don't say that. If you bite your tongue, you take that back. It's Sorry. the talk. The talk. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, you don't say the view around here. I'm sorry. It's like when my dad worked for for. I'm uh, sorry. Coke. It's like when my dad worked for Pepsi. You're gonna walk in with a Coke. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what? And and uh, what was it like working with Howard Stern on AGT? Oh my God. Well, I I was a friend of his anyway. So to work together was the best. We had a really, really great time together. So much fun. So much fun. It was just brilliant. I loved that gig. Yeah. And then and I was sad when you left, but, uh, but you, you, you were cross with NBC for their yes. treatment of Jack. I was very cross with NBC particularly a guy called Paul Telegli and this woman, Meredith Eyre, they, they did very badly by Jack, who at the time was going through so much because he'd just been diagnosed with MS. Uh -huh. And he was completely without any um, self-respect as a man. He'd just got married. He had a child. He had no work. And he wanted to be able to provide for his family. And he, um, they gave him a gig and then they took it away from him. And I was so upset with them, so upset that um, I just basically, I called them all arseholes, motherfuckers, <laughs> I told them all to fuck themselves and then I was leaving. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd never seen anything like it because then they said, oh, the most insulting thing was, um, oh, well, we'll pay him. We'll just send him money. And I'm like, no, you don't get it. He's, he needs his self-respect. He needs to work. Oh, well, we'll pay him. And it's like, no. They could have said, well, we'll give money to an MS charity in his name. But none of that. It was just, oh, you know, throw a check at him and they'll shut up. They yeah. didn't give shit so no i never wanted to to um work with those people again i love how how you stand up for what you believe in sharon yeah but you know what i'm in a very very blessed position and i realize it because i'm in a position where i don't have to do it i do it because i really love doing it so i can say to people fuck off i'm not <laughs> taking it mm -hmm. Whereas so many people can't, you know, they can't. And that's why so many people are so badly treated. Right. Because they need the gig. Right. Um, and, and the talk. And the, yeah. what, what's going on with the talk now? 
Uh, well, we're doing it from home. You know, we're doing it through Zoom every day. So um, I, I actually love it because I don't <laughs> have to leave the house. Oh, there is so much about about this and doing things remotely that that I want to hang on to once the coronavirus is in. Rear I kind of prefer going to twelve step meetings on Zoom instead of in person. It's just kind of nice oh, to do? sit in your underwear. Yeah. Well, especially yeah. in L.A. when it takes an hour to drive anywhere yeah. and then an hour to drive back when you can just get into the business of what you're doing. And, and uh -huh. uh, it, it's it's pretty convenient. Yeah. Um, and and uh, I, I saw on your Wikipedia, you have uh, the the record for the the top selling book in the history of, uh, of books in England. Yeah, I do. I know. I who would have thought? <laughs> It's fantastic that that. Uh, what book is that? It's one of Sharon's three autobiographies. Sorry, let me not answer your question for you. Yeah, it's called Survivor, and it was um, that one was about uh, my, you know, meeting Ozzy, growing up as a child in the industry, and meeting Ozzy, and you know, our, some of our life together. So it's. Um, it's a good book, I think. Yeah, yeah well, I was actually, sorry, I was curious about some of that. Like, what was Ozzy like when you met him? Was he always that, like, this kind of crazy guy, or did that develop over time? Um, he was always, always very nice guy. Funny. He was so funny. Uh -huh. And that's what attracted me to him, because he was naughty. <laughs> but he, um, I think as the drinking and drug taking progressed with Ozzy, he got more dangerous and his his behavior was much more dangerous. You know, it wasn't so funny towards the end. Sure. What, what I'm dying to know is because I'm a tour manager for Steve and when we go travel, you know, like our writer is just soda water for the green room. All we ask for is soda water. And you were doing these bands, you know, it, what are some of the interesting writers that like ELO did or Ozzy wanted or Black Sabbath? Do you know what? We, I have always told everybody that I work with, whatever you have on your rider, you pay for. <laughs> nice. You know, you're allotted a certain amount. Maybe you're allotted $500 from the promoter, but everything over that you pay for. So if you want a sushi chef and you want a huge party after the show, it's on your dime. So, you know, just have the bare, bare bones because you don't need it. You don't want it. You're only going to throw it up the wall anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so sure. Ozzy's, Ozzy's has always been, you know, minimum. Same as Sabbath and ELO. It was very, very, you know, low key. <laughs> How did the uh, collaboration with Post Malone come about? Oh, it came about through Kelly. Um, Kelly knew one of the producers for Post Malone who had just done, oh, uh, come up with an idea for a new song and said that um, Ozzy would be perfect to do a duet with um, Post. And so Kelly then came to us. And so that's how it started through Kelly. It's amazing how big this Post Malone character is. He's, Isn't it? It's is. incredible. And what what I find fascinating is, is that his image is so much harder than his music. Yeah. Right, <laughs> yeah. You look at the image and you go, what the hell is this? And his audience is very young. Right. I know. It's, it's un I mean, I think his audience is to everybody. He's so big. Yeah. So yeah, he's a good guy. He's a very good guy. Everybody says that about Post Malone. Like he couldn't yeah. be nicer. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's all you ever hear. Yeah, that's he's good. very nice, humble. You know, sweet guy. He really is. For sure. Um, and now with the, with the random questions over here, but what was it like to to work with Donald Trump on the Celebrity Apprentice? Oh my <laughs> lord! Oh my lord! <laughs> Very interesting, put it that way, very interesting. It was at the time, you know, that he did it in the Trump Tower and all of that, and he's just, um, woo. <laughs> he's, I can remember we went into his apartment and we had to wear surgical things over our shoes so we didn't get the place 
dirty. And we went in there and it was like my grandmother's. Um, my grandmother would have loved it in there, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of gold and a lot of velvet. <laughs> and it was, you know, it was just like an old lady's apartment. They have like couch protectors over his couches and... Yeah, they might as well, you know, but they did have one of those portraits of him and his wife <laughs> done on black. You know, they do it with the charcoal. Mm -hmm. They used to do like Asian ladies that were done with a black background, you know, and they would sit like this. I mean, just the worst art you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> <laughs> but I, Oh, and I think he had um, a water feature with plants in, in the apartment. I mean, just terrible <laughs> and he was i he was um just weird you know did you see my receptionist did you see her did you see how beautiful <laughs> nobody has a receptionist like i do no, see my, her yeah. she's gorgeous he's like, like she looks just I like my care. daughter yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man and 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 so with, with the, I'm just bouncing all over but this has just been so so thrilling for me um how's Ozzy doing now He's doing good. He's doing really, really good. You know, he's he's um, had terrible, terrible injury that, you know, at uh, one point they thought he would never walk again. But he is. He's walking. He's doing great. And, you know, he's been hit by so much medically. Um, but he's he's doing good. He is. He's getting stronger every day. Yeah. Was we that the spine injury you're talking about? Yeah. That you think brought on the, the, the gene? Oh, God. I mean, the to be hit with the, you know, the spinal injury, and then what it had done was it kind of um, started off the Parkinson's that he had the gene for, but was never activated. He just had the gene. It's like having, you know, the breast cancer gene, but it never comes into fruition. It never gets alive. And he had the Parkinson gene and this ac accident just sparked it off. So he had, he kind of had a double dose of everything, but he's doing good. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's heartbreaking. It's, heartbreaking to see this at you know he's had this ride in his life and then suddenly boom and like you are flawed and to have your health taken away no matter what what you've got money wise or anything in the world can't fix right but uh but he's still thriving in his career yeah I oh mean. my god what about his album i mean just incredible the album was sensational it um it you know he's starting his second album with andrew watt right now and you know he's he's you can't stop him you know he's he's doing it yeah oh it's fantastic well i and, i think you uh, know ozzy says that he as far as performing goes he has to end it his way because it was his farewell tour that he was on, mm. but he still had a year to do of that tour. And uh -huh. there were seats sold for the next year, but, you know, the accident right. stopped it all. But he said, it's not going to end just like that. It's going to end his way and he's going to go back out. And even if it's just one huge show, to say goodbye he's going to do it so i love it i love it well i'll tell you what sharon this has been everything that i i imagined everything i i, I hoped for and uh you're just so fantastic so wonderful and and uh just loads and loads of love to you and your whole family oh, bless you thank you yeah. i have to ask you one thing sure, of course ask me anything you'd like yeah Tell me about your dog. This is Wendy. I found her in the streets of Peru. And uh, it's, I was in Peru for three weeks, and she followed me everywhere I went. She has oh. her own T-shirt, too, the <laughs> Fresh Princess of Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I made a video of, uh, of finding her. I was actually filming when I found her. And, uh, you know, I slept with a tent outside the hotel because they wouldn't let her in the hotel. And um, 
and this video I made of finding Wendy and bringing her home, it it uh, it garnered more views than anything I've ever put on the internet. Which, oh my uh, God, she is beautiful. Right, is that she? She goes at my speed. If I go fast, she goes fast. If I'm sitting there, she's sitting there. <laughs> Gosh, gorgeous. So, how many dogs have you rescued? Uh, well, we, we we had five, but we, we had, one didn't really work out, so we rehomed that one. Uh, we've got four dogs at the house, two cats, and three goats in the backyard. I <laughs> love it. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I love it. It's so good to see you doing so well. Well, thank you. I appreciate that so, so much. And uh, Kelly, she, she's uh, rocking it in sobriety, yeah? She is. She is. She's doing just great. She is. Thank yeah. God. All my love to, to all of your family, everybody. It's uh, it's it's uh, such an honor, such a treat. And uh, and and thank you. I don't know about you, but I think that was the greatest. And as I always say, thank you so much to you guys who stuck in there to the very end. Uh, I'm guessing that this going out in two days hmm, have I already sent the street team a text I'm not sure if it's not already where you've got the fucking first access to the gnarly comedy special it's imminent so yeah do that whole fucking text me thing and uh, the street team gets it first fuck yeah love you guys